Hi, this is Denver Riddle from Color Grading Central. In this video tutorial, we'll be covering the first step of the correction stage, and that is of setting the correct exposure. Our objective is to get nice exposed images using the correction tools found in DaVinci Resolve. But sometimes you might wonder, well what constitutes a correctly exposed image? What are the ideal luma values for things like skin tones, and where should I set my highlights? It may seem like they're a moving target, but they don't have to be. Fortunately, we have an answer to this in the form of the zone system pioneered by famous black and white photographer Ansel Adams. Throughout his career, he studied the ideal exposure levels in black and white print and photography. He developed this study into the zone system. Ranging from 0 to 10, the zone system describes ideal exposure values for things like tree foliage, skin tones, and snow. Using the zone system as a reference, we can easily adapt it to our waveform scope for our purposes. We'll find pure black of the zone system represented as 0 on the scope, middle gray at 512, and pure white at 1023. If we're working within the safe limits for broadcast, then we take this into consideration. The Ansel Adams zone system can be a valuable resource when first starting out in color grading, and then once one becomes more familiar with judging correct exposure, then they won't need to refer to the zone system anymore. Gauging correct exposure just takes some practice. So let's do some color grading. We'll go through some examples that need some correction, and we'll reference the zone system as a guide. In the first example, we have a shot that's underexposed. We can see that most of the trace is gathered here towards the bottom of the scope. We can also see that the shadows are elevated. So let's take care of the shadows first, as that always seems to be a good place to start. I'll point out real quickly that I'll just work with the full range of data since this will make it easier to compare the scope with the zone system and if it needs to be broadcast safe then we can output it using the scaled video levels option. Okay, so using the lift control I'll bring down the shadows until the trace just begins to touch zero. I don't want to go too far as this is known as crushing the blacks and doing so will cause us to lose details in the shadows. Now looking at the highlights in the image, we can see that the woman's blouse is the brightest thing. But where do we set it on the waveform? Well let's take a look at the zone system. 10 is pure white, 9 is slight tonality with no detail, and 8 has detail. So I think that it should be in the 8th zone with the specular on the blouse touching the 9th zone. I'll bring up the highlights using the gain control until the highlights begin to approach the 9th zone. Okay, that makes a dramatic difference to our image. Now let's take a look at our skin tones to see where we're at with them. Since sometimes it can be difficult to spot the skin tones in the waveform, I'll share with you a really cool trick that will enable us to review just the skin tones. With either the qualifier tool or a power window, we can isolate just the skin tones and see them in the waveform scope. Using a polygon shape, I'll position the points until they're just over the skin tones. I'll then turn on the highlight feature on the wave panel. And now you can see just the skin tones in the waveform. It looks like we're getting a nice range of exposure on her skin from the shadowy features in zone 4 to the highlight features in zone 7. But you can see that overall that the exposure is centered around zone 5 to 6, indicating that we have correct exposure for her skin tones. In this case, we won't need to make any adjustments to the midtones. Let's take a look at the before and after. Looks a lot better. Okay, let's move on. In our next example, we have another underexposed image. Looking in the waveform, it looks like we're fine in the shadows, but it might be a good idea to bring up the exposure on the wall in the background to about zone 8. The wall is represented here in the highlights, so I'll pull up on the highlights using the gain control until it reaches zone 8. Okay, the highlights look better, but this doesn't solve the underexposure of our skin tones. So using the gamma control, I'll bring up the exposure on the midtones. And you'll notice when I do this that it also brings up the highlights. So instead, to counteract this, I'll simultaneously adjust the gain control while I bring up the gamma. This will keep the highlights where they're at and allow me to bring up the skin tones at the same time. Okay, that looks great. Since she has a tanner complexion, I'd say she'd be centered between the fourth and fifth zone. Let's take a look at the before and after. Much better. That really helped out the skin tones. Now let's look at some overexposed images. 
In this first one, you can see that the skin tones look a bit hot and there's some clipping going on in the highlights. In case you don't know what clipping is, clipping is when the signal goes above the range that the camera can record resulting in clipped or lost detail. It's also sometimes referred to as being blown out and sometimes we can pull back the information and other times we cannot. In this image, the brightest parts are the man's white shirt and the chairs they're sitting in. On the zone system, that would put them at about an 8 or 9. So let's do that. I'll pull back on the highlights using the gain control and you can see that we're starting to recover some of the detail in the skin tones. We can further bring down the exposure on the skin tones with the gamma control and also maintain the exposure in the highlights by simultaneously adjusting the gamma and gain controls. Okay, we've brought our highlights down to where they should be and we're also able to recover much of the information as we brought the exposure on the skin tones down. Looking at the before and after, you can see that we've really saved this shot. In the next overexposed image, you'll see that the skin tones are really blown out and pulling back on the gain control doesn't recover much of the detail and makes the image just look muddy. So what do we do? Well, in this case, there is some hope as the clipping is occurring just in the red channel. I won't show you in this tutorial, but in a later tutorial, I'll share with you a technique for rebuilding the lost information in the red channel. I just wanted to show you an overexposed image that we can't simply fix with the lift, gamma, and gain controls. So stay tuned for that and for some other really cool tutorials on setting the exposure. Thanks for watching.